Hey guys, um, my name is Sarah and I am here to talk to you guys about self-portraiture. Um, so I am going to talk about a few main things tonight. I've been taking self-portraits for about 10 years now and there's a few things that have stood out to me over the years based on both my own experience as well as what other people have asked me about ways that can help you really improve those self-portraits. So the first one is I'm going to talk about triggering um, your camera. Main thing is how do you do it? How do you do it in a way that's fairly easy and um, how we actually expose and focus properly. That's kind of the technical side of it. The second thing I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about um, kind of how you look at yourself a little bit differently, look at yourself more objectively, so that your body of self-portraiture can just keep growing because you standing in front of a camera gets pretty old pretty fast. Um, and then the third thing I'm going to talk about is how you can get started when you just don't feel like you maybe are in the right mood, in the right mindset, and how to make yourself keep shooting. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. In the meantime, I'm going to be shooting. This lovely set is set up and I'm just going to take a self-portrait um, and I'll walk you guys through kind of my thought process behind how I came to this idea as well as um, show you the actual how I do it. Um, so. First thing, before we get started, I want to say thank you to Canon and B&H. They do an awesome job supporting us as a school, and they made these live streams possible. So thanks, guys. And also, I want to talk about Forrest. Look. He's sticking his thumb in front of the camera. Hi, He's the cameraman tonight. <laughs> my husband. Jean and Jessica are ma manning everything, making sure everything runs properly, and Neil's just sitting there. He's hanging out with us tonight, just giving moral support. Um, so we're going to get started. If you guys have any questions at all throughout the whole um, time that I'm talking, feel free to ask them. Jessica's monitoring all the comments and she'll make sure to pass anything along or answer what she knows and it's going to be super great. Um, so one thing I want to say first is um, if you're in, in tempting self-portraiture, awesome. I am so happy that you're doing it because I think it's one of the best forms of photography to help you grow as an artist. And self-portraiture in general is one of those things that I think a lot of people are scared of, but it's one of the things that um, can really help you see light, help you see faces, help you see the way that you shoot in a less stressful way um, because you don't have to wait on anybody else. It's just you and your camera and a room. So um, we're going to talk about why it's great. So first I want to talk about how we actually trigger our cameras. So I want to show you a couple of things real fast here. Um, I want to, hang on, let me talk about it first because there's a couple things I wanted to mention. First, when we are thinking about how we're actually going to trigger our camera, it kind of breaks down into three buckets. So it's um, how we actually trigger it, like what releases the shutter, how we actually autofocus, and how we expose. Because things are a little bit different with self-portraiture, because it's not like walking up to a scene where everything's there for you. You actually have to build the scene, and your main subject is not in the shot when you're building it. So it can get really complicated. Um, but the first and most important thing that you want to think about if you're taking self-portraits is find a way that you can trigger your camera without having to stand and push the button all the time because that works and it's a great way to get started but it can slow you down and keep you from um, branching out and feeling more comfortable with this particular art form. So one thing I recommend is buy a remote um, because remotes are really great and if it sounds scary to go purchase another photography item don't worry you can get one for like 20 bucks which is super great. Um, so I want to show you that. There's a few that um, you can see here uh, on B&H and actually we put these links in the description so you should be able to see these just by clicking on them but here you can see the Canon RC6 is just an infrared remote that's super cheap it's $21 and it's awesome it's a really great way to get started because um, you don't have to uh, have anything else on your camera you just set your camera to self timer mode and you push this button and it fires the camera for you so super easy low barrier to entry the Nikon version of this is the Nikon ML3 or MLL3, and it's only eighteen dollars. You save three bucks there just for shooting Nikon, so that's awesome. Good Nikon. Um, but that's super cool. And one thing uh, about these remotes is they really are versatile, except there's a couple limitations. So one thing you should know is these usually don't let you shoot past about 16, 20, 30 feet. So if you're more than that distance away from your camera, it might not fire. So that's the only disadvantage um, range-wise. 
The second disadvantage is if you're shooting in bright sunlight, it is an infrared button. So if you're shooting with an infrared button and there's also a ton of light hitting your lens, then your infrared sensor might not actually see the tiny little amount of uh, infrared light coming from your remote. So it can be a little bit tricky in bright sunlight. But other than that, these things are awesome. They're basically indestructible. And if you do destruct it, it's only 20 bucks to replace. So I love them. Um, you can even get some off brands like Velo and get like a five pack. So if you're going crazy and you really want to break them all, that's great. <laughs> Um, and they look like this. So that's what I'm actually going to use tonight is I'm going to use one of these tiny little guys and this is my Canon one. One other thing that's great about this is they all have a um, little switchy on the back and this tiny switch actually will let you switch between firing as soon as you push the button or firing two seconds after you push the button. I love having that two second option because if I push this button, I can check it out of my scene and then take my picture without it in my shot, which is really, really great. Now I have to go find it. Um, okay, so next thing I want to say is if this remote doesn't sound great to you, if you don't like those limitations, you can check out the Velo FreeWave. Um, it's a, also super affordable. It's only 45 bucks. And they have a ton of different um, varieties of cords, but these little um, adapter thingies are exactly the same. So the thing that goes on your hot shoe on your camera and the remote that you trigger it with those are both basically the same, but the cord that you get that connects them to your camera is different based on your camera model and your camera, um, your camera brand primarily. So you wanna be making sure that you're getting the right one. So it looks great, but you need to make sure that it actually matches with your camera. And the whole description of these things will tell you whether it does. But perk of this, it doesn't have the light problem and it can work up to about 300 feet away. So it fixes both of those things, which is super great. And it doesn't have to be line of sight because it's a radio trigger. Um, there are a couple of other triggers that are really great, but these are just like super affordable and tried and true and I love them. I have both and they're great. Um, so those are some good remote choices and I highly recommend considering them. So that's the first thing I wanna talk about because remotes are really, really crucial if you wanna really make this something that you do pretty frequently. The second thing is if you don't have a remote, which is completely okay too, you can still get started in self-portraiture. And I wanna talk about that for a minute because uh, you might not A, want to go buy a remote before you take your first self-portrait. Maybe there's shipping time. Maybe you really wanna take one tonight. Awesome, I hope you do. Um, but you might not have a remote with you. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to do the 10 second dash. <laughs> so in order to actually trigger your camera, you're going to want to make sure that you're set on self timer mode, that 10 second delay. And then you're going to want something that you can focus on. So I want to demonstrate that real fast because I think it can get really confusing on how to get a sharp shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my camera here to self timer mode. I'm going to put it on a um, 10 second timer and I'm going to have it focus on something that's not me. So I've got this plant here and this is pretty normal. Like maybe you have a stool in your house and then maybe you have a, a bouquet of flowers or a plant or something that you could put in place of where you're going to be. As soon as I get that where I want it, I'm actually going to focus on that and I'm going to actually, there we go, focus on that. Then when I'm ready to take my shot, as long as I'm on manual focus, so I'm gonna switch my lens back so that it doesn't autofocus again and mess it up. So I'm gonna set my focus on where I'm going to be, set it on an object. Then I'm gonna to switch to manual focus so it doesn't do anything crazy. Then I'm gonna push my button, it's gonna take 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna sit here for seven more seconds and then it's gonna take my picture. All right. And you can see, there's myself, right? So I'm pretty darn close. I'm a little off on focus because my branches were kind of in the wrong spot. But one thing you want to pay attention to when you're focusing is make sure that what you focus on, you can easily swap out yourself. So one thing that I'll do is if I'm standing next to a tree or something, I'll pick a specific leaf or a specific branch. I'll focus on that. And then I know to stand exactly in line with that when I go stand in the picture and take my picture. So that's something that you can do if you don't have a remote. Um, third thing I want to talk about is exposure. So if you, or I didn't really talk about focusing for remote, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, if you're exposing for your self-portrait, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to meter the scene without you in it. 
So one thing that's really important is make sure that you are metering in the area of the photo where you're actually going to have the same light on yourself. So I'm not going to take a meter reading of the bright area in the background because I might not be in the, sh in the bright area when I get into my shot. So we just have to be thoughtful about picking the right area to meter our shot. And then if I set the exposure based on where I'm going to be, where my uh, face will be properly illuminated, then I know that it's going to be perfect once I get into the shot. So I'm going to meter based on where the light is that I'm going to be not caring about what goes on in the other areas of the picture. That's super important. And then when you get in there, it'll work. The next thing I want to talk about is I didn't mention apps yet, but if your camera has Wi-Fi, you might have a third option for triggering your camera. Um, there's actually, I know Canon and Nikon have apps, Fuji has an app, I think every brand has an app now, um, but you, your camera has to have Wi-Fi in order for it to be compatible. So if your camera has Wi-Fi, that's awesome. You can actually um, get on your phone, get the app, and you can take your picture from your phone, which is really cool. So you can actually autofocus from your phone. You can see the picture that you're creating on your phone, even when you're far away from your camera. So it's a super duper great technique if you have that compatibility. And I use that pretty frequently. Um, so something to think about if you do have Wi-Fi. However, this works great. It's only 20 bucks. So there's really nothing too crazy to get into self-portraiture. Next thing I want to talk about is when you do have a remote, you do have to be thoughtful about how you're autofocusing because that's a little bit different and it's a little counterintuitive, um, especially if you're someone who likes to focus with the back button on your camera because if you're pushing the back button on your camera, then it means that your shutter doesn't control the autofocus. And when we're taking self-portraits, we want to control the autofocus with our shutter because this is the only button we have. This is the only button we have to both trigger the camera as well as uh, set the autofocus. So what I do when I'm using a remote is I set my camera to front button focus. So I'm auto on autofocus and I set my camera to front button focus. And once it's on there, I know that when I come out here, and I stand in front of my camera, I can take a picture and as soon as I hit this button, it will also focus wherever my focal point is. So I set my focal point on my camera, you know how you can move it around with your little joystick? I set it to the exact center of my lens. And so since I did that, I can take this picture and it just auto focused on me. So now I should be perfectly sharp right in the center of the scene. Look at that winner of an expression. <laughs> so that is uh, kind of the easiest method, I think, is if you do have that uh, front button focus set, so your shutter will trigger uh, both the metering, the exposure, and the autofocus, that's going to set you up better for a remote than using rear focus, because you still have focusing issues, and you still have to focus on something else in the frame. It makes you really good at setting back focus, too. Yeah, it, unset it, set it, all the time. it makes you really comfortable finding those settings. So you're going to want to get used to changing that back and forth if it's something that you do frequently. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is um, how I set up things today. So I have kind of alluded to this, but today I've set up so that I am with my tiny little remote here and I am on front button focus and I'm on the timer mode because we have to set the camera to timer when we're using our remotes. And then I have um, a giant light here, but normally I don't use lights. Normally I just use a window. But in order to uh, demonstrate some of this stuff today here at school, this makes it a little bit easier. So I have just my camera set up. I have a 50 millimeter lens and I really like a 50 millimeter lens for self-portraiture. It's really uh, versatile. And also it's just the right distance away where I can sit here and I don't have to constantly like run a thousand feet away back and forth from my camera to my spot where I'm shooting. And that's super duper useful. So here I can be right here, click, take my picture. It focuses on me and then I can go back and I can review it without having to walk like a thousand feet. So I like the 50 that is not very long and anything too wide will start to distort your face a little bit, which is not the most fun thing to look at. Um, so next thing I want to talk about is what I want to do uh, today is kind of help you guys to feel more comfortable, really. Um, Self-portraiture is one of those things that I think can be really scary for a lot of people. And um, it's not only practicing your photo skills, but it's also practicing your comfortability in front of the camera, which is kind of challenging. <laughs> 
Um, and I will say I started taking self-portraits in high school. I was a junior in high school, and it was something that a lot of my online photo friends were doing. And so it sounded like something fun to try. And my first self-portrait, I took 550 pictures before I found one that I liked. Um, so it's super normal for you to kind of doubt it, for you to feel like you're struggling, and for you to even like what you're producing. Um, but I highly encourage you to stick with it because it turns into something that can really enrich your photographic life. And it has become probably my favorite type of photography overall. And I love all types of photography. Um, so one thing I want you guys to do though is I think that one thing that can help is looking at yourself more objectively. Because like I said and alluded to earlier, it gets really, tiring to just take a picture of you standing there looking the same in every picture. So we don't want that. What can help self portraiture grow is if it becomes something of an art form on its own. And I think that's where all the magic starts to happen. So the only way we can do that is if we start to kind of set our own personality, our own vision of ourselves aside, and we start to just look at ourselves as a person that we place in a photo, almost like just, it just doesn't matter who it is, it's just a human that we wanna photograph. And that kind of separation between who I am versus what I'm photographing can really help me broaden my ideas because it's not just like who am I as a person, it's what kind of photos would I like to create or what type of people would I like to photograph and then I can morph myself into becoming more like that. And it starts to just broaden your scope and it's really interesting. Um, so. Couple things I have to recommend um, to help you feel more comfortable than that. In that is um, look at the light in the scene and let the light inspire you because different lighting in different areas will just be really lovely. And as soon as you see a light that you really love, maybe think about how would a person look in there. And then if you don't have a person you can photograph, put yourself in there, right? So that's literally like how I live my life. <laughs> That's how I got into self-portraiture, is that I just didn't have a model, right? And so I didn't want to inconvenience anyone else, so I just started using myself. And then I have all the time in the world to do it. I can experiment as much as I want, and no one's waiting on me. Plus, it gives me so much more um, understanding and uh, empathy for the people that I do photograph, because then I know exactly what it feels like to be on the other side of the camera and be critical of how you're coming across on the screen. Um, so, look at the light. Also, look at the features on your face as if you were another person. That's another thing that can really help is like, I know what my face looks like so well now because I've taken so many pictures of myself. I know what I like, I know what I don't like, but as soon as you start to look at things kind of as like, if this was another person I'm photographing, how would I pose them? How would I light them? How would I look at how things are actually coming together? And that's something that can again help you kind of step aside and just look at things objectively. Next, think about the moods and emotions that you want people to feel when they look at the photo and how you can personally feel them. So this is where I think self-portraiture kind of turns into a little bit of um, self-reflection or even like therapy. It's one of those things that is just too funny because when you start digging deep and you're thinking about the different emotions that you want to uh, portray, you have to start to figure out how to portray that on your face. And that comes from actually thinking you know, of something sad or thinking of something happy. And you start to have this kind of um, acting ability by pulling those emotions out of yourself, which is really cool. The next thing, um, I want you guys to actually make yourself look how you want to look. Because sometimes that comes from uh, just looking at uh, your closet and picking your favorite outfit. But I highly recommend something that doesn't have any um, logos, doesn't have anything like that. What's up? Hang on, we might have some technical difficulties. What's up, guys? Audio. Is it the baby? <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be feeling flutters by now. Guys, I'm like 20 weeks pregnant. This is super cool. <laughs> All right, one sec. Audio's going to drop for a second, everybody. It'll be back. All right, hold on. Is that better? Can we you guys hear we me? Won't know for a while. Mom, okay. Mom, are you good? Hopefully that can fix it. Sorry about any what? technical difficulties oh, that we've gotten. Um, but I want to hope that I'm coming across okay. Sounds like oh, rustling. Did my mic move? Yes. Pull that up a little bit. <laughs> it's 
probably my fault. <laughs> I hate these things. Okay. So, anyways, hopefully you can hear me a little bit better now. Um, I hate it when that happens, but that's why I shouldn't be clipped to a mic. <laughs> but I'm doing it. I'm making it. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about is kind of how I've learned to uh, do this myself is I like to look at uh, my images as if I was critiquing it if someone else was in the shot. Because as soon as you look at your pictures on the back of your camera or on your computer, uh, you're going to start looking at both the photographic side of do these look good in a compositional exposure technical way, as well as do I like myself? And you start to be nitpicky and critical about who you are as a person and how your physical appearance comes across. And I really, really caution you to try to push that second side away because we need to look at both the photography, but we also need to just look at the mood and the feeling because it doesn't matter that you're the person in the photo, right? We already decided that. We already decided that it's more about the photo, it's more about the light, the expression, the emotion, and what you're actually going for in the story. Um, so we have to kind of look at ourselves as if this was another person that I photographed. And that can be hard to do, but it becomes more comfortable with time. You start to really see yourself doing it even without even meaning to because you become so comfortable being in front of the camera. So what I want to do is I want to talk about how I came up with this idea today because um, it was kind of a hilarious experience. <laughs> um, I actually have been uh, playing for an hour or so before I actually got live with you guys. and. I want to talk through kind of how that process came to be because it can be hard to um, hard to see something like this where it's all like, oh great, polished, I have a light, I have a camera, I have a tripod, I have everything I need. And of course I might get a photo that is okay, but it's literally such a not normal occurrence for me to have anything like this. And I will tell you, I initially woke up this morning and was like, what am I going to photograph today? I have no idea. How am I going to make a good self-portrait? And I brought my eucalyptus, this beautiful plant, and my whole plan was to have this as a main prop in my photo. And it smells amazing and it looks amazing. But it wasn't really like doing it for me. It wasn't actually inspiring me. And every time I tried to use it, and every time I tried to use like um, the light in the background that I wanted, it just didn't look right. And so I nixed that. There's nothing wrong with just throwing away the idea that might have gotten you started shooting and going with a second idea. Um, so what I ended up doing was I looked in my closet and there was this sweatshirt that was bubblegum colored. I went out and I bought bubblegum. <laughs> which is kind of a random, random connection. But um, I thought about it and was like, I haven't done a bubblegum selfie in like nine years, so it's time. Um, so I thought that that would be a fun thing to try. And I basically built the whole photo around the fact that it would be bubblegum. So I picked my earrings, I picked my headband, I picked um, my makeup, what I'm wearing, partially what I'm wearing so I could be mic'd, even though it fell off anyway. Um, and that is kind of how my idea kind of came together. It wasn't what I thought might work because the more I thought about it, it just wasn't coming together. And that happens all the time. I get excited about something and then it just totally falls apart. The important thing is when something falls apart, keep going because your second idea might be better than the first. And I will tell you that most of the time, all of my best self-portraits have come from days when I had no inspiration whatsoever. And I just sat down and I just started shooting. And that's the thing that's really important, is to keep yourself motivated and to keep yourself inspired and excited, you have to just pull out your camera, set up your tripod, and start taking pictures. And it will feel weird, it will feel so strange, and you're not gonna be comfortable with it, you're not gonna like it, most likely, for the first 10 photos of yourself. But once you start to feel comfortable with the technical and the idea of being in front of the camera, it becomes something that if you just start shooting, you might come up with something even more interesting the next time. And then it becomes something else. And then it becomes you wrapping yourself in bubble wrap in your bedroom when you're in high school, which is something that I did. Um, but it's something like that that will keep you, um, I think, going. Because most of the time, I don't have any concrete ideas. And it was so hard to come up with something that I wanted to do tonight. So I just decided not to. And I figured something would come to me. I'm usually inspired by maybe a specific mood or maybe a, um, a color or bubblegum, a prop, um, any particular thing that kind of sounds interesting. And I think, how would that photograph? And then I just use myself as essentially a prop 
to photograph that mood or that feeling or that thing. And by thinking of yourself that way, I think it really helps um, just make that image so much more universally applicable. It's not just about you. It's about what you're depicting and how you can bring a mood together in a photo. So let's do it. Let's actually talk about this because I've been blabbering for long enough. But I want to get this photo going. I already pre-chewed my bubble gum. I had to get it to that good spot where it like actually blows a bubble. Hopefully it worked. I don't know. I'm going to make sure my camera is alive. I have my trusty remote, $20. I'm going to chew my bubble gum. I'm sorry if you can hear me chewing on the mic. That sounds like it might not be the most attractive <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a couple test shots. That's how I always start with self-portraits is I just, usually I look absolutely crappy in the first photo because I have no idea what I'm doing, right? So I just take a picture and I just see how it comes out. And I see, is it something that um, I like the lighting of? Do I like kind of how I'm being placed? Do I like roughly what I'm wearing? Oftentimes, you'll see in my Lightroom catalog, it's hilarious. The first photo is always 80% different from the second photo and the remaining photos of the set. Because I look at the first one and I think, wow, I need to change my shirt. I need to go put some lipstick on. <laughs> I need to do a bunch of things so that I can actually get a photo that I really want to create. And that's okay. So I take that test shot, and then as I'm moving along, I'm going to make sure that, like, now that I've looked at myself, right, I'm going to make sure that I've actually got everything kind of where I want it. So I'm going to think about my features, right? So I know that this is my favorite side of my face. I know that because I've shot so many times. So I'm going to kind of turn with that toward the camera. Also, my light is coming from this direction, this big, gigantic, beautiful light. I'm going to make sure that that is illuminating most of the front of my face. Because just in lighting, as a photographer, we know that that's very attractive. I'm going for a kind of loop lighting effect is what I'm looking at. I know that that's going to create really beautiful light. Normally, I'm working with a window. But still, I would probably just turn a little bit toward that window. I take most of my self-portraits in my bathtub, where I get really beautiful light coming through that frosted glass window. It's a great place to try if you haven't looked at your own bathtub. OK. So I'm going to try to blow a bubble. We'll see if it works. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Definitely didn't work. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Hang on. I got one good one earlier. <laughs> I really need, like, hyperdrive. Wow, that looks really bad. <laughs> I hope you're showing people that. She is. Good. OK. <laughs> Dang it. Uh. I got to time it right. So every time I push this remote, it's waiting two seconds, and then it's firing. So I know that I need to blow my bubble within that two seconds. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, how am I turning my face? I need to make sure it's kind of in the line that I want, make sure I feel my hair in the right place, and then sit up straight so I don't look like a Kremlin. <laughs> so let's see. Ah, just missed it. Almost there. Hmm. I got one. Oh, it's not too bad. So you guys can see that one on the screen there. Not the worst thing ever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that. And I'm going to think, what are the things that I like? What are the things that I don't like? How can I make it better? Obviously, I'm going to edit out, edit out my mic. But other things that I like, I like how the light is illuminating both of my earrings. I think my hair is a little bit too puffy on one side, so I'm going to try to tone that down. I don't hate my expression because it kind of fits the bubble. And hopefully, I can blow another bubble again. <laughs> we'll see. So then, I'm just going to go back. I'm going to fix the things I didn't like. And I'm going to try it again. <laughs> I'm sure this is hilarious. <laughs> Oh, got stuck. <laughs> oh no, it caught that. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. My hair looks better like that. I'm kind of slouching, so I'm gonna fix that. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's getting worse. <laughs> that's a winner right there. 
Okay, so what I'm doing through thinking through this process, at this point, I'm just playing, right? I'm just seeing, am I gonna get a better shot than that one that had a good bubble? And I'm pretty determined and perfectionistic, so I'm gonna get a good bubble. And also, I just want to chime in, this is why you do self-portraiture without five people watching you. <laughs> right? Um, so, most of the time, my self-portrait process, it takes a different amount of time based on essentially what I'm shooting and how complex the uh, topic is, how, how the theme, I guess. So, most of the time, I'm going to probably shoot at least 10 pictures, minimum. And that's because the first one, each one's going to be thoughtful, right? First one, I'm going to really look at how things are pulling together with light, prop, uh, uh, expression, and clothing. Second time, I'm going to look at um, how everything is actually coming together once I fix those first things, and then keep looking at fixing things I don't like and things I do like, and get close to that final shot. All right, that might be a winner. I think I got lucky. Oh yeah, so now I've got a nice big bubble. I've got my head turned where I want it. I've got a little bit of a loop shadow, light on both earrings, and my hair's not too poofy on one side. So I'd call that pretty good. But one thing I wanna show you real fast before we wrap up, this is the point where you can either keep going or you can stop. And I highly recommend keeping going because sometimes when you have some sort of excitement, some sort of inspiration by looking at a photo that you've taken, that can be the catalyst to push you forward to make even better shots. So while this is where I started, often what I'll do when I'm shooting is I'll keep going. I'll say, wow, that's good, but what else do I like? What else could I play with tonight? Because I already see great light. Maybe it's coming through my window. Maybe it's right here in the studio. How can I emphasize that? How can I make it better? So what I might do is I might move myself. I might put myself in a different room. I might change my outfit. I might come up with a different prop or a different story. Or I might just think about how I can emphasize a different part of my body. Like maybe it's about the hands. Maybe it's about the feet. Maybe it's not about my face at all. Maybe it's the back of my head. Maybe it's profile. How can we get creative and just try something else? And that leads to my last tip, which is, most importantly, you guys, you have to just start shooting. I need to get this out of my mouth because I can't talk. You have to just start shooting. I tell this to all of my students when they're thinking about self-portraiture is you're going to put more mental roadblocks in your way with self-portraiture than any other type of photography. So what you have to do is you have to put your camera on that tripod and you have to stand in front of it and just start taking some pictures because you'd be surprised if you just let yourself take a few photos, try a few different things before you look at the back of your camera, one of those might turn out better than the others. And that can be a starting place for moving forward and taking more images like that. So I highly recommend not looking at the back of your camera until you've taken about five, 10 shots because that can be a great way to um, look at yourself a little bit more objectively. Try like five different expressions, try five different poses, try five different um, shirts, <laughs> I don't care. Um, but something like that, that can start you looking at um, just what makes the photo good in using the subject that I have, as opposed to taking the first shot, looking at it, hating how you look, and then never moving forward, which is the worst thing you can do if you're trying to get out of self-portraiture. So you have to just start shooting. And like I said, all my best photos have happened on days when I have no ideas, where the first photo I'm just sitting there like, and that's okay, because then it turns into something where I'm too stubborn to get something I don't like, so I just keep playing and trying to get something I do like. The second thing is um, I want you to physically just do it. Like, don't get afraid, don't get scared, don't think too hard. Just put your camera on the tripod and sit in front of it and just see what happens. And lastly, I have three final tips. So first. Talk. Hello? You're good. You're good. Can you hear me? You Sorry. I must have accidentally muted myself. Um, <laughs> I'm really bad at mics, apparently. Um, I re recommend not looking at your photos on the back of your camera until you've actually taken a few shots so that you don't judge yourself and not the picture. Second, look at which pose or expression is actually coming out the right way and try to recreate it. Try to actually make that be your main pose for the shoot that you're doing. And that should get you closer to um, the photo that might be final. Add in a prop or a cat or a flower. Um, I, my cats hate when I put them in my photos, but I try. And before you know it, you might be inspired by one of those things and you put together a photo that you really like and you're proud of. Third, 
do this as often as you possibly can. Like I said earlier, the first 10 shots you might not like at all, but eventually it's gonna be something that you start to feel more comfortable with in all capacities of the art form, and you might be able to get something you really like out of it. Um, so I want you guys to uh, actually challenge yourself. If you haven't taken a self-portrait before, take one this week. That's actually our challenge on Instagram right now, which is super fun. So if you follow us on Instagram, um, just use the hashtag RMSP inspo and that will tag it so that we can go see it and we're gonna post our favorites at the end of the week. So just try it, just give yourself the opportunity to play. Um, and even if you don't have a tripod, set your camera on the kitchen table and then just go sit in a chair across from it. You can get so creative. I've set my camera on rocks on the ground before. Um, you just use what you have. And then lastly, um, I want you guys to think about how you can get over yourself in these pictures, right? So I mentioned that. Again, that's the hardest part. So remember to look at yourself objectively. Okay, now I'm done blabbering. I know I keep saying like, this is the last thing, um, but this is actually the last thing. I'm going to Portland <laughs> in um, middle of September and I'm gonna be teaching a super short class on how to edit your photos in your particular style. And this is a really, really awesome class. I really enjoy teaching it. And it, the whole goal is that people start to um, look at their work as something that they've created and something that they can really make their own through editing. And so it's gonna be pretty fun. It's only a few hours, I think it costs 20 bucks and I'll be there in the middle of September. So that could be a fun thing if you're interested. And we are done today. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you got some good information. And if you have any questions about self-portraiture, put them in the comments. Remember to like this video if you liked it and thumbs down if you hated all my audio problems. Um, but please do subscribe if you like what we're producing because we put a lot of time into it and we love doing it. So it'd be fun to have you guys checking out our videos. So thank you everyone for watching. You're awesome and I can't wait to uh, hear from you. Take yourself portraits and we'll see them on Instagram.